Hey everybody, it's Andrew again, your average jeweler. We are back answering another question. We're talking about emeralds today. And before you go off to find some other more interesting or unknown stone, it constantly surprises me how many people don't know some of the most common and popular gemstones out there. So we're gonna dive into emerald today, hopefully answer some of those questions. Welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for being here. I hope you learned something. If you find this interesting and you like learning new things specifically about jewelry, but really about anything, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you find value here. Today we're talking about emerald. And I'm going to try and take you from some of the more basic things to some of the more complicated and complex characteristics of emerald. And we're also going to talk about some of the more interesting things about emerald. So let's start with the most basic. Most basic thing about emerald is its color. Emerald is literally defining a green color and it comes from the gemstone. Uh, emerald gemstones have been around and prized for millennia now. You can go back to the Egyptians and how prized that was, although sometimes often confused with peridot. You can watch that video. But emerald is green and it's not just green, but it is green barrel, barrel being the mineral, and it can't be too pale because you'll sometimes find that if emerald is a very pale green, it actually starts getting out of what we consider to be emerald and into what we just call green barrel. I know that starts to sound kind of boring and silly, but that is how it works. So if we see very low saturations of green within a barrel stone, it may not actually carry the emerald designation. Now, what other gemstones are in the barrel family? Well, you have your aquamarine, which is typically light blue. You have your morganite, which is gonna be more of the uh, pink to somewhat peachy colors. And you'll even run into some of those other odd varieties within the orange family. And it, it can even come in some really neat red colors. Now, of course, some of these being much more rare than others. All that to say, beryl is actually a pretty well-known stone, and you see it a lot more often than you even realize. So knowing that beryl comes in a variety of colors and a whole rainbow, what makes the green? Well, usually green comes from chromium, which interestingly enough, is the same thing that causes the red in ruby. So some of the most beautiful gemstones in the world, some of the most beautiful greens, and some of the most beautiful reds are actually caused by the same element, chromium. And that, of course, is a trace element in there, so it's a very small amount of chromium within that stone, because these are typically stones that without any trace elements, you actually have a colorless variety of said stone. So what you have is chromium getting in there, and it's usually not just chromium. The other things that get in there, such as iron and other elements, can impact how that color varies um, within being more yellow or more blue. But the reality is chromium gets a lot of the credit for being some of the finest emerald green colors that you can find. Chromium is not the only thing responsible for being green. And now we're gonna start getting to some of what I consider to be the more interesting facts about emerald. And that's actually controversy. Yes, the jewelry industry and gemstones specifically do have controversy. And one of the things that they argued about many, many years ago is vanadium. Now vanadium can be cause for a lot of different colors as well in different gemstones. But within emerald, what they were finding is that all these beautiful stones that, that came from Central to South America were coming back with chromium in them. And they're your prized Colombian emeralds, Colombia often having the reputation for the finest emeralds in the world. But then you had areas like Brazil that they started bringing these green stones back from. And of course, they, they started to test as beryl but what did surprise people is that they didn't have chromium or they didn't have a lot of chromium and they were actually primarily colored by vanadium. 
Now, vanadium causes the green in many of your tourmaline, along with chromium, interestingly enough. But usually vanadium is more likely to cause the green in something like tourmaline. With emerald, they started to argue that really emerald should be a designation where it's only colored by chromium. Seems kind of a silly conversation to have, uh, almost feels like you don't need to be having that discussion, but when you're talking about definition and you're talking about words and how to use them, yes, they had to discuss whether vanadium qualified to be an emerald. Ultimately, GIA came down to the conclusion that yes, these green barrel, where the green is caused by vanadium, are in fact still considered emerald. So to this day, any kind of green emerald that has enough saturation in it whether it's caused by chromium or vanadium, is going to be called emerald. Since we're still talking about color, it's important to note that usually the most valuable coloring within emerald is going to have a slightly bluish hue to it. Of course, it can lean to the blue, it can lean to the yellow, and there's beautiful gemstones in that whole spectrum. But if you're talking about what are the most prized emeralds, course for one thing they're going to have to be clean but secondly they usually have a very slight bluish tinge to it not heavily blue not strong blue but just a little bit of blue in there and most people find that to be the top in the desirability category we all have our preferences I'm not gonna say that I would always pick one that has a slight bluish hue but that is one of the contributing factors to emerald value now getting into the more technical side of things, we also want to just generally reference some of those chemical characteristics and some of those scientific features that we have within beryl and the emerald family. Usually beryl is a more hexagonal type of crystal in its habit, so it's going to have six sides within most raw crystals. And then the other thing with that to remember is its hardness. Now the hardness of emerald is actually pretty good. Beryl family falls usually within a seven and a half to maybe an eight on the Mohs hardness scale. So in a hardness sense, it's actually a pretty practical gemstone. Huge caveat coming. It is one of the more fragile gemstones most of the time. Why is that? Well, it has a lot to do with emerald being classified as a class three gem. What that means Class 1 being one of the cleanest internally gemstones, Class 3, you're going to have more inclusions. And inclusions, to a small degree, can add character, but when you have a lot of them, they actually take away from the stone's durability and make it more fragile. So you got to be careful about that. You really want to watch that when you're buying something like an emerald. And it's one of the biggest reasons why you won't see most jewelers try and lean you towards just a general emerald in a ring, especially something important like an engagement ring, because they can prove to be more fragile. And unless you're getting a very, very high caliber emerald, they almost always have inclusions, and the inclusions are usually somewhat noticeable. On the lower end, the commercial grade emeralds, you're almost certainly buying a heavily included gemstone. So just watch out for that. Uh, be mindful that even though it is hard and scratch resistant, that does not necessarily make it more durable. Now, if we're talking about buying an emerald, I mentioned just there some of the practical durability considerations. There are a few other things to consider. One, most emeralds are treated, but you do want to try and find out how it's treated, because there are some treatments that are more acceptable than others. Usually it has to do with long-term durability. Uh, most of your oil treatments, where they've, they've just kind of pressurized oil into the stone, those are pretty well accepted. Those are pretty common. They don't damage the stone long term. Um, certain varieties of resin filling are also accepted. But one of the things that you really have to watch out for is if it has been dyed at all. You do not want to get a stone that is dyed, and you usually have to get it from a reputable jeweler to really know that for sure. Um, if you want a lab report on some of your more valuable expensive stones getting into the many, many thousands of dollars, that's definitely an option to make sure you know what you're getting. But you want to watch out for treatments and you at least want to ask the question and make sure the jeweler knows and understands that you do want to know what type of, what type of treatments it's gone through. But unless otherwise stated, you can assume that they've usually had some type of oil filling or resin filling because that is common you wouldn't have many pretty emeralds without it. 
Another consideration is the synthetic variety or the lab-grown arena. Now this has been going on for quite some time. There is actually a fun story about uh, Chatham, uh, Mr. Chatham, who first synthesized emeralds and how he came about doing that. But with that said, emerald was one of the hardest stones to actually synthesize or make a lab-grown version of. There were a lot of things that made that difficult. But for the last, I guess it would be 60 years now, we have had lab-grown emeralds and they have come up with some other ways to, to make them. But if you're looking for the most natural looking variety, usually you're gonna get something with the Chatham name on it. That's not uncommon, but you can find other things. Just be sure that you're getting a lab-grown version, a synthetic version, and not just a simulant, because simulant can even be glass or it could be another inexpensive stone entirely. Emeralds are one of the most popular stones for a reason. They can be beautiful and people love the color green. So it's no surprise that emeralds have been prized and valued for a long, long time. They do come from all over the world these days. So you actually can still get a hold of some Colombian emeralds, but they are gonna, they are gonna call for higher prices just by being Colombian emeralds because people value that pedigree but there's beautiful ones that come from Brazil, as I mentioned. You have many different African countries, Zambia being a very prominent one where they have beautiful emeralds, and even the US. The United States has actually mined some very fine emeralds over the years. But that's not something that we're known for in the mining arena. But keep in mind, you can find emeralds, know what questions to ask if you're looking for one, if you're shopping for one, and try and even in your own mind before you go in looking for one, get an understanding of what things might be important to you. And that should help steer your conversation and your buying process a little bit, but enjoy the process. If you have questions for me concerning emeralds, I hope you'll ask them below in the comment section. I enjoy answering those. If there was something in particular you enjoyed about today, whether it was the provenance or the chemistry side, or just the very general basic facts about emeralds, let me know what you found interesting. I like to hear that feedback. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you're still watching, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Hit the like button if you found it fun and or interesting, and I will catch you on the next one so we can keep learning.